My name is Daisy. I live with Olivia, who I consider to be like a real sister to me. Now my parents passed away in an accident. When I was starting high school, since then, I've been living with my brother, Archie. To be honest, I've always disliked Archie. When we were kids, he used to bully me a lot. He'd pull my hair, mess up my things, and even break my favorite toys. He'd laugh at me when I cried, and violence was just a normal thing with him. I had to put up with his mean comments all the time. I've hated Archie since I was little, and if he ever needed my help in the future, I'd probably say no. Archie is a selfish person. He always thinks he's the best and hates losing. He's the kind of person who would hurt others to get what he wants. After our parents died, an uncle offered to take us in, but Archie didn't want to go. I wasn't sure about leaving our home to live with a relative I barely knew, but Archie and I thought we could handle things on our own. Living alone was hard, but we managed. However, Archie and I stopped talking. He started going out at night and hanging out with rough people, which made me dislike him even more. A few years after Archie finished college and got a job, he suddenly brought home a girlfriend named Olivia. She's really beautiful and elegant. I couldn't understand why someone as lovely as Olivia would want to date someone as awful as Archie. I didn't think they were a good match, but I didn't say anything because it wasn't my place to judge. Olivia said she was going to move in with us. I wondered if it was too sudden and if Olivia was really okay with it. I had to ask her. I'm fine with it, but are you sure you're okay, Olivia? We had a little disagreement with my dad, but my mom said it's an experience, and if her dad thinks it's reasonable and they've all agreed, then I have nothing more to say. And so, a beautiful woman named Olivia moved into our home. After living with her for a few months, I realized she's an amazing person. She took over all the household chores that I had been doing. At that time, I had graduated high school but hadn't gone to college. I had no ambitions and was used to doing housework. Above all, I didn't have the confidence to do housework while going to university. But Olivia encouraged me to find my passion, saying it's never too late. Ever since my parents passed away, my life had been a cycle of chores. In school, I'd wake up, make breakfast, do laundry, go to school, and then come straight home to clean and make dinner. I didn't have time for friends or part-time jobs. I was living like a mom during what should have been an exciting time in high school. I didn't even have a boyfriend, not that I was interested until Olivia pointed it out. I hadn't realized I had no hobbies or passions. Looking back at my high school life, I felt a bit lonely. I remember talking with friends in middle school about wanting to get part-time jobs and boyfriends in high school. I decided to reconsider my future. I thought I'd start with a part-time job, but I didn't want to leave all the housework to Olivia, so I helped her whenever I could. One day, it struck me, is Olivia actually amazing? I was pretty confident in my cooking skills since I've been doing it ever since we lost our parents. I also often looked at books. Initially, I thought Olivia, with her elegant demeanor, wouldn't have much experience with housework. I was wrong. Olivia was perfect at cleaning, laundry, and especially cooking. Her cooking was so good she could be a pro. It made me wonder again why she was with Archie, who has such a terrible personality. I started to admire Olivia. I thought of her as a real sister. She said she felt the same way about me. We even started going out for meals and hanging out, but Archie didn't seem to like that Olivia and I were getting along so well. Years later, Archie found himself at the center of a major incident. One day, after several years had passed, I got a call. By this time, I had already moved out and was living on my own. The call was from Archie. For some reason, he was furious and yelled over the phone, What are you doing on the day of the ceremony? You better not miss it. I responded, What ceremony? I haven't received an invitation. 
Archie sounded puzzled and said, huh. But I decided to tell him the truth. Why Archie thought he could get married after doing what he did was beyond me. Let's rewind to the time when Olivia started living with us. After Olivia moved in, the bullying had mostly stopped. But there was a day when Archie became physically violent toward me. It started because Archie was angry at Olivia. Archie would take the lunchbox to work that Olivia prepared for him, but one day Olivia overslept and couldn't make his lunch. Archie was furious about it. To me, it seemed like a minor issue. When Archie got home that day, I talked to him about the morning incident. Why get so mad at her for a missed lunch? Nobody's perfect. People oversleep sometimes, you know, I said. I didn't mean anything deep by it, but Archie didn't like what I said and suddenly became enraged. A woman who's going to be my wife should be perfect at everything. It's your fault for being around and influencing her, he said. According to him, my presence was a bad influence on Olivia. Of course, I argued back. I used to cry a lot as a kid, but now I speak my mind. We got into a heated argument, and suddenly Archie shoved me. Then he started kicking me. Just then, Olivia returned from shopping and intervened. She was angry at Archie, but Archie didn't calm down. And then I saw something unbelievable. Archie slapped Olivia. He then left the house and disappeared. I was left stunned and couldn't move for a while. Olivia was also frozen, holding her slapped cheek. Snapping back to reality, I approached Olivia and asked, Olivia, are you okay? She replied, I'm fine, but tears were spilling from her eyes. She said sorry and retreated to her room. From that day on, Archie became increasingly aggressive toward Olivia. One day, I decided to talk to her. I was worried because she was losing her usual brightness. Thinking a change of scenery might help, I took her outside, and she ended up confiding in me. She was unsure whether to go through with marrying Ellen. I immediately said she should break it off and that there was someone better out there for her. Olivia seemed a bit surprised. Talking to me seemed to lift her spirits a bit. On the way home, I said to Olivia, I'll always be on your side, Olivia. Olivia cracked a small, somewhat sad smile. One day, I overheard Olivia arguing with Archie, which was unusual for her. Curious, I asked what was going on. Turns out, Archie had gone ahead and set a wedding date without consulting her. No wonder Olivia was upset. But what shocked me even more was this, don't set a wedding date without even having a family meeting first. Apparently, Archie hadn't even met with Olivia's parents yet. This was just beyond rude, and I was shocked he hadn't even taken this basic step. I immediately suggested that we go meet Em's parents. Archie told me to mind my own business, but this was no time for that. Olivia quickly explained the situation to her parents, and they both went to visit them. Her face looked both exhausted and tired, which worried me. That day, only Archie returned home. I had a hunch about what happened and sent Olivia a text. After a while, she replied, and we met up at a nearby cafe to discuss what had transpired. Long story short, her parents had objected to the marriage. I continued listening to the story, thinking that it must be so. I listened as she explained that Archie had set the wedding day without meeting them and had been treating her poorly recently, so they couldn't allow their daughter to marry him. Yet, Archie had already informed his workplace about the wedding date and even booked the venue, so he was in a tight spot. Now I felt embarrassed for him. Olivia's parents obviously didn't have a good impression of Archie. For the time being, Olivia decided to stay at her parents' home to think things over. She said she wanted to think alone for a while. Archie objected, of course, but he was persuaded by her parents and returned home alone. I asked Olivia if I could meet her parents. She was puzzled but agreed since I insisted. Later, 
I met with Olivia's parents and apologized for Archie's rudeness. They were quite surprised, not just by the apology, but that someone as considerate as me could be related to Archie. I then shared everything about Archie, about Olivia, and about how Archie had been treating her. I asked Olivia again, do you still want to marry Archie? Olivia responded, I'm not sure. I suggested she should have a serious talk with Archie. She agreed, but when she tried to contact him to talk, Archie wasn't interested in discussing anything. Worse, he was still moving forward with the wedding plans. He even sent Olivia a list asking her to prepare the invitations. At this point, Olivia had had enough and finally decided to break up with Archie. She tried multiple times to discuss the matter with Archie, but it seemed like they could never have a real conversation. Every time she reached out, Archie would dominate the conversation and end it abruptly. She even texted him about breaking up, but Archie dismissed it, saying, Enough with the jokes, just prepare for the wedding. So, the day Archie unilaterally decided would be their wedding day arrived, and Olivia contacted me in a fury. I couldn't help but marvel at how well Archie had planned the wedding without giving it much thought. I gave him a piece of my mind. You never took your conversations with Olivia seriously, and honestly, I can't fathom why you think you can get married. No one's coming to this wedding, plus you quit your job without telling anyone. You've lost all credibility with that. I hung up the phone. That's right, Archie had quit his job without telling anyone. Olivia found out about this during an incident, and Archie had contacted her as well. Olivia and I were together at the time, expecting his call. What's going on? Why aren't you coming? Why isn't anyone coming? I've told you multiple times that I want to break up. You never listened. You even went ahead and planned a wedding, so I thought you might as well go ahead with it. Olivia finally told Archie everything. She hadn't sent out invitations because she didn't want to get married, but he had told people at work about the date. So, she contacted them to cancel the wedding to avoid causing them any inconvenience. That's when she first heard that Archie had quit his job. She intended to talk to Archie again, but given his usual attitude, she decided to let it go, saying goodbye and hanging up. After hanging up, Olivia looked relieved and refreshed. She apologized to me, but I was more than satisfied with the outcome. In the end, Archie had brought this upon himself. He never took his relationship with Olivia seriously and made all the decisions on his own. If he had taken the time to have a serious conversation with Olivia, things might have turned out differently, but that's neither here nor there now. Olivia has been worried about living alone. I had anticipated this and had already decided to move out and live on my own. I had even finalized the lease and just needed to move later. After moving, Olivia and I continued to be as close as best friends. I told her I would miss her as if she were my sister, but she assured me there was no need to part ways. Since then, we've gone out for meals, hung out, and even traveled together. I spent my days working part-time, trying to find what I really wanted to do. Olivia being the incredibly capable and thoughtful person. She also started a part-time job where I worked. Olivia is the whole package, beautiful, talented, and incredibly considerate. She quickly became popular at work. One day, Olivia mentioned she might be getting stalked by someone. Given how amazing she is, it wasn't surprising. Worried, I decided to accompany her home whenever possible. Then one day, it happened. Olivia was attacked on her way home. I couldn't be with her that day cause I was sick. I thought the stalker had given up, but it turns out they were just waiting for Olivia to be alone. She was almost dragged into an alley, but a passerby happened to rescue her. Olivia was surprised to see the person attacking her. It turned out to be my older brother, Archie. Archie was arrested. I heard about it the next day during police questioning. Archie admitted he had been stalking Olivia, waiting for an opportunity. 
He acted because I wasn't there to protect her. Hearing this broke my heart. As much as I despised Archie, I never thought someone from our own family would commit a crime. Olivia was shocked, of course, but I was even more devastated. I apologized to Olivia and her parents and thanked the person who saved her. Olivia's parents were very kind to me. If you don't mind, would you like to live with me? Olivia suggested, but I decided to move out for now and return to my parents' house. It was empty now that Archie was arrested, but I couldn't bear to leave a house filled with memories of my parents and childhood. Olivia suggested we could live there together. After some thought, I accepted her offer. So here we are, living together in my old home. Today, we're visiting my parents' graves. Olivia came with me. In front of my parents' tombstones, I silently apologized for Archie's crime and my failure to stop him, all because I couldn't stand him.